Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from North Light Images and in this video I'm going to have a look at the confusing sometimes issue of media settings for things like printing cards, stickers, prints, photo prints for example. Now, media settings. Um, I have got another uh, video uh, that looks specifically at profiling and media settings and things like that, although that is somewhat in the context of producing actual photo prints and stuff. Here I'm looking at printing anything on any old printer because um, the same settings apply whether you're using an office printer trying to get colour out of it or something like that. Quite often people say, I've got this card I want to print on or some stickers or something like this and I put it through the printer and I don't know what media settings to use. Well, media settings themselves are uh, something for a printer that tells the printer information about the media that is going through it. Now that can include things like the thickness, uh, how to feed the paper, even as to which paper slots you can use for a particular media. You may find uh, that a particular printer lets you load a media by one slot, but if you change the media setting it forces you to use another one. Um, it's, there, are, there will be reasons. It also can change the particular inks in use. So I remember testing Epson ED2850, where, which has a four, is a four color ink printer. The black is a pigment ink, and then the colors are cyan, magenta, and yellow. If you print on a matte media setting, it uses all four inks. If you print on a photo setting, it uses just the colour inks and the performance is distinctly lacklustre on many media. But that's what you expect. It's an office printer that can print photos. But I've got, I'll have cover stuff like that in my reviews. I'll put some links in the notes to some of the reviews related to what I'm talking about here. But the real problem with media settings is that the printer makers, all of them, give you no useful information about what the media settings actually change. There is no list that says, you know, if you use this media setting, you can only use that particular uh, slot on the printer or something like that. Now, that's a problem. It's something I've complained about to printer manufacturers for years. They show no sign of taking any notice whatsoever, so we just have to get over it and work around it. Now, the best way of printing is always for, certainly when I'm doing color uh, stuff, is always to use a printer profile. Now, if you get a printer profile for a paper, and that can be a manufacturer's own paper or third party paper, if you get a profile for that, the profile should have the media setting that it was created at. Well, that's fine, that's, that's the proper way of doing it. But what about if you haven't got a media setting for it? Well, and your paper is not, um, let's say you're using an Epson printer and you've got Epson Premium Gloss as your paper. Now, it might happen, uh, I know some Epson printers, where there isn't an Epson Premium Gloss setting, but there is an Epson Premium Semi-Gloss setting, which is almost the same. Why one exists on one printer doesn't exist on another printer, only Epson, Canon, HP, all the others, they're the only people who know that. I wish there would be more information available, certainly make it easier for me to answer people's questions when they ask about this stuff. Anyway, that's the best way, but I said I'm talking about printing on anything. Your best bet for trying a new paper, and here is a paper, this is a paper I tested, this is a Baraita paper when I was testing Epson P5300. Um, I have used the premium luster photo paper setting on the P5300. Now, I did, this is a Hannah Muller paper, I did some testing, and they say we rec some testing, and they also say we recommend using the following settings. That's great. But once again, this is fairly high-end photo printing. This is not sort of stickers and, and the likes of that. This sort of approach works for pictures, for photos, even for black and white. Uh, there are ways around it. But what do you do if you genuinely don't know what media setting to do? Well, obviously I'm going to say you're going to have to do some experimenting. And you're going to have to try and guess which setting works best. Now, I have... Uh, in the past, I wrote an article years ago about this. Um, I had a, a, an old printer and I put some third-party inks in it. We're talking nearly 20 years ago. 
and uh, the pic I printed a, a picture on it. And this is a photograph of the of the picture, and the colours came out all over the place. Well, that was hardly surprising. Printers were much more difficult to profile 20 years ago, and also third-party inks were not so good. Now, I still don't generally recommend third-party inks, except for certain very specialised users. But you know, I needed a way of actually finding out how to get how to profile this and how to get a good print out of it. Well, I've got a test image, and I'll put a link through to the test images for this that you can print. Now, this test image, you print it as you would however you're going to print it with your printer, and you look at how the results come out. And you'll find that for some media settings, if you've got a really bad paper ink mismatch, the ink won't set, won't dry properly. Uh, but if you look very carefully at it, at these transitions, or you can use a, an image like this, and I'll put links to all the stuff like this uh, in, in the notes. Look for bleeding of inks. So particularly in this one here, you would look where there are very dark colours against light colours. You would look to see that there are sharp lines. If you're getting the ink appearing to bleed physically on the paper, that immediately tells you there's probably something wrong. You may be putting too much ink down on the paper. Now, if we knew what the ink media settings mean, we'd go for one that used less ink. Unfortunately, as I've said, we don't. So what do you actually pick? Uh, you go for lighter papers. Now, you might want to try um, even trying something like plain paper. Now, it turned out on this particular printer with these third-party inks, and I was uh, testing a generic photo paper on it as well, so everything just set to random. It turned out the absolute best ink settings I got, and this is before I did any profiling or anything like that, the best ink settings came from using the plain paper setting. I was not expecting that at all. And that's what really convinced me that you know, media settings were something that you need to get right. Now, there are lots of ways of addressing this. Let's say you've got a printer, you're not doing any of this sort of profiling stuff, you're not doing that, you just want to print on your, uh, your small printer. You want to print something. Get an image like this, you don't have to print it this big. This is just because this is what I use for profiling. Print this out as you would print it. If you get the ink not drying, take that as a big hint that the media is not suitable for the inks in your printer. I don't care what the person who sold you the stickers or whatever says about it, says about its compatibility. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Uh, you do just have to move on sometimes. Now, on this, we've got the blacks. Are we getting good, when you print it out, are you getting good dense blacks? Well, you might say, yeah, all the colors washed out. Well, it, quite possibly, if I print it on the rear side of this that isn't coated, I would get a very washed out look. I might even get some running of the colours. That's because this is paper. It's a very nice cotton rag paper, if I remember rightly. But it hasn't got the coating to take the inks. And if you've got the wrong coating, you put the inks, they don't work so well. So you need to print something like this. And I've got downloads for all of these. And this will give you a good guide. But if you want to see what colors your printer can manage on the media you've got at the settings you're using, and I've got a, a video looking at this in terms of printing brightly colored text. If you print this out, this is pretty much the range of colors that your printer can manage on that particular media. Now, there will be transitions in it. And don't worry if you can't clearly see the, you know, the difference between each individual square here. That's to be expected. Although if they all just disappear up into a mush, then once again, a hint that that media doesn't work. So you print something like that. Doesn't need to be any, you don't need any, whatever software you use normally. Um, if you want to print it from your phone, as long as you can get the image onto your phone some way, print it from your phone. It'll show you what's cap what the printer system is capable of. But just, do remember though that it may not work and that's one of the biggest takeaways I want from this for you is that if you're experimenting and you try the media settings and you can't get good results from it don't beat yourself up over it it is because it is probably a paper media stickers whatever 
that doesn't work. So I've tried printing on CDs for printers that have um, yeah, trays for printing on CDs. I print on one print, so-called printable CD, take it out, put it down to dry, pick it up five minutes later, oh, the ink's rubbed off on my fingers. No, those inks that I've got in that printer don't work on that particular surface. I've got another one, I print on it and it looks great. Um, it is very hit and miss. But I've got lots of other details of this. Have a look at the notes. I'll put a few more links to the, you know, relevant stuff in this. But the real thing is, yeah, don't beat yourself up over it if you don't. Yes, your sample may not work. It's one reason that until you've tested it, don't go out and buy loads and loads of sticker material and stuff like that. And then just to find that you print it and rub your hand across it and you've got ink on your fingers. Uh, so I hope that's of use. Please do ask questions. It was somebody's question asking about something like this that reminded me I've not covered this topic very, very much recently. So um, I hope that's of some use. And uh, thanks for watching. And please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks.